Okay, in this video, we're going to look at linear and angular motion. Um, so I have a kind of a claim here, and we're just going to derive it, and then we're going to do a problem. So it says, for an object moving on a circular path of radius r with constant angular velocity omega, the linear velocity of the object is given by v equals r times omega. And omega here is defined to be, so omega is a, a um, circular uh, or an angular velocity or a sometimes it's called angular or rotational velocity. So that's always theta divided by t. Okay, so theta is going to be uh, in our problems given in radians and t is just some unit of time. Okay, so it's omega is a velocity, it's a rotational velocity, right? Radians per unit time. So, you know, really our formula would be V equals R times theta over T. So let's see if we can see why this is true. So, again, the claim is that uh, V equals R times omega, which is this. Okay, so why is that true? All right, well, let's look at the circle here, right? First, let's just label that. Let's input in some units here just because it'll make... Um, the analysis a little easier. This S here is, you want to think of it as two things. It's a change in position, but it's also this arc length. But in any case, it could have units as like, you know, centimeters, or we're just going to use miles. Theta here, the units are radians. And um, R, therefore, would have to also be in miles if the arc length is in miles. Okay, and so we've got that the point moves from, you know, a particle or whatever moves from P to Q, and that's going to trace an angle. It's also going to um, create a displacement. So S is actually a displacement, okay? It's an arc length, but we're thinking as a kind of a dynamic situation, it's moving. So S equals a displacement, which is a change in position. Now, one thing I just want to point out, usually in physics, you use the triangle to indicate change in, like, you know, delta. We're not going to do that because um, the point is moving with constant angular velocity, so there's really no need to do that. Um, we're just going to kind of get away with using t as to, you, to mean change in time. Okay, so here we go. So the linear velocity is uh, v. Okay, v is the linear velocity. Let's start with that. Okay, so linear velocity would be um, would be a change in position, so s over a change in time. All right, and again, the units on s is miles. The units on t here would be time. Now I want to go over to the side here, and, and again, remember I said that s is not only is it a, a displacement, it's also the length of this arc. So hopefully you're coming to this video having learned something about arc length. That arc length can be written as r times theta, where r is, of course, in miles, right? It's the radius, and theta is in radians, okay? So that's that's where we're going to get our formula from, because we're going to write this equals, and we're just going to replace the s with r times theta. So it's going to be r times theta divided by t, which equals r times theta over t, which is precisely r times omega. Um, one little point I'll make before I go into, uh, into an example is, if we look at units here, something a little fishy goes on, but it, it's, it's important to, to, to note it because radians can be one of those things that confuse students. So if you think about, remember this S here had units miles, and our units of time, you know, we didn't really indicate that. Let's just say hours. So this S was a change in position. That would be something like miles per hour, right? Now, when we made the substitution, this R has radians, uh, has uh, units miles, and this theta has units radians. Obviously, this still has units hours. But your final answer looks like it has units mile radians per hour. The thing to keep in mind is that a radian technically is a unitless um, is a unitless unit, um, and you know that's that's something we we can talk about. But you really want to think of radians as not is kind of being an optional and really an unimportant unit. 
Um, so it's not really a problem that mile radians over per hours is, is not matching up with miles per hour. That's just a side note. All right, let's do an example here. So this says uh, the radius of the earth at a certain latitude where your house is located is 2,960 miles. Given that the earth rotates once every 24 hours, find the linear velocity in miles per hour of your house as the world turns. So let's first start with a picture. Okay, so let's just say this is the earth. Okay, and we know that the earth has, according to this, a radius of uh, 2,960 miles. Okay, it's uh, rotating, and we know that the earth rotates once. Not happy with that arrow. Uh, we know that it rotates once every, um, does one revolution every 24 hours. So I'll just note that one revolution per 24 hours. Okay. So the question is, what is the, what is the, the linear velocity, right? The linear velocity. Well, let's use our new formula and then I can show you another way to do it in case you don't quite love this formula, you don't remember it. So the first way we'll do it is just using our formula. So the linear velocity, V, is equal to R times omega, which is R times theta over T. So we know R, right? R is 2,960. Okay, so we write 2,960, 2,960. Um, and then theta over T, right? What's that? Well, it's the radian, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's omega, it's, radi it's gonna have units radians per hour. So if uh, the Earth rotates one revolution every 24 hours, that means it's gonna rotate two pi radians every 24 hours. Okay, so what, I'll just note that one revolution per hour here, that equals a rotation of two pi radians every 24 hours, that's omega. That's your rotational uh, speed or your rotational velocity. So we substitute that in, two pi radians per 24 hours. Let me just note the units here, right? This is, in mi this is miles. And below here, we see uh, um, radians per hour. Okay, so you get miles radian, the units would be miles times radians per hour, but radians is unitless, so it's just miles per hour. And simplifying here, I'm gonna kinda um, assume that you can punch this on the calculator, you get about 774.93 miles per hour. Okay, so that's using our formula. Um, let's say, you know, you did, you kind of didn't use this formula. You, you're not really thrilled with it. There's a there's a way to reason through this problem and get the same answer in a way that's you know just as fine, just as good. You you end up kind of rederiving this this formula above. You just start with the fact that the the Earth does one revolution every 24 hours, and you want to convert this to miles per hour. So in order to do that, note that the hours are fine. We we already have the unit in the denominator. We want hours. What we got to do is convert revolutions into miles. So we need a relationship between one revolution and um, basically how, you know, if you were to sort of unravel the earth in one rotation, what would the distance be? That would just be the circumference, right? So it's going to do 2 pi times the radius, which is 2,960. That's the circumference, every revolution. Okay, so again, the units up here would be uh, miles per revolution. And then you see it cancel. Revolutions as units cancel. And you'll notice you get precisely what we get here if we just rearrange, right? I'm gonna put the, the radius there in front. Theta is two pi and uh, 24 is our denominator. Notice that will that's precisely what you see above. So um, that is a just a rundown of velocity for circular motion that relates angular and linear velocity. And you've got a formula you can use, but of course you can just go back to basic principles and do 
dimensional analysis if, um, if you prefer.